Good morning, I'm Kevin Mullins and thank you for joining us today at the virtual photography show. It's a shame we can't all be together in person. Today, however, I am at the wonderful House of Photography, which is Fujifilm's flagship store in London's Covent Garden. And it's the first time I've been to London in about six months and it's very quiet. Um, but I'm glad you're here. And today we are going to talk a little bit about creating a pictorial legacy with pictures. We're going to be together for about 20 minutes or so, and I've got several pictures to show you and a couple of slideshows. And I'm going to start off by just giving you a brief introduction to how I got started in photography and where I am now in my journey. And it all started for me around about 12, 13 years ago and I became a documentary wedding photographer in around about 2009, 2010, something like that. And my role as a Fujifilm ambassador started in 2012 with the original X100. This is the X100V that we have here, and that's the fifth model of that camera. And currently I'm shooting with that camera, an X-Pro3 and an X-T3. And I'm very proud to be a Fujifilm ambassador, and all of the pictures that you're going to see today and the slideshows, etc., were all taken on various versions of the Fujifilm cameras. So we're talking about a pictorial legacy and what does that mean to you and what does that mean to me? To me it means that we're creating images that people will look at in the future and we'll remind them not necessarily always of pleasant moments but we'll give them a, a view into the history and, and I often say to people and I say to my clients also that a picture doesn't necessarily have to be good it just has to be important. So for example we have a picture here and this is my little son Albie. As you can see, he's got tears rolling down his eyes. But the point about this picture, and this is what brings us to this idea of legacy, is that we're reminding ourselves in the future, our future selves, our children's children and their grandchildren of times gone by. And I think it's really important as a family and a wedding photographer specifically to be able to capture moments in their reality rather than in a prefabricated version, some kind of fairy tale story, if you like. So we have another picture here that is from um, the same period of time, the kids. This is shot on a GFX 50R a couple of years ago. And you can see that they're there in the garden um, having a lot of fun. And of course, you know, during this recent lockdown, we've spent a lot of time in the garden. They've grown up a little bit since. But the point is, having a camera with you at all times, regardless of what camera it is, is going to allow you to capture these moments, to capture these magical moments forever and for the future. And like I say, and I'll keep repeating this, it's not just for me, it's not just for my wife, it's not just for them, but it's for their kids and their kids' kids. Now, when it comes to photography and this idea of creating art, if you like, that will empower us or allow us to see these images, there's only three parameters that we need to remember. And this is true of any style of photography. And it just comes down to light, composition and moment. If you have a good picture with good light, good composition and a good moment, like all of the pictures on the wall here at the House of Photography, then you're going to have a picture that is going to win awards, could be printed, will look good in books, etc., etc. However, if you're shooting candidly, purely candidly, as I do, then it's very difficult to get an image with good light, good composition, and a good moment all of the time. Sometimes you have to make compromises. The most important thing for me is the moment. That's really what drives me and what I enjoy shooting. And when it comes to weddings, I shoot purely as a candid photojournalist, documentary wedding photographer, if you like. And I think that allows people to enjoy themselves on their wedding day a little bit more but more importantly, that it gives them a real, true, honest representation of their wedding day. Here I have a picture from a wedding that was actually at Stonehenge. It was last year or perhaps the year before. It was a dawn wedding. Uh, they had druids as the celebrants and it was just before the summer solstice. We're here, it's about 5.30 in the morning and I really wanted to capture a picture here that showed off the stones but also showed off the fact that it's a journey for the clients and their children who are with them in this, in this particular wedding. I find that this kind of picture, this beautiful, colourful, vibrant picture, is something that I think will allow them in the future to look and remember more, rather than just a picture of the stones themselves and a picture of them stood at the altar. This is a storytelling picture, and that's what I mean by a legacy and this idea of pictorial storytelling. Okay, so I'm just going to show you a photo film now from a wedding. This is a wedding that was shot in the Dordogne, southwest of France. It's a beautiful film. It's a wedding between a 
Jewish lady and a Christian man. So there's a bit of a crossover in terms of religions there, but the fun and the beauty of it is amazing throughout. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, wonderful wedding, of course. Uh, very vibrant towards the end. Now, all weddings, regardless of culture, creed, beliefs, all of that kind of stuff, I think deserve to be photographed sympathetically and honestly. And that doesn't mean, of course, there's not a place for posed pictures and more editorial style wedding photography. Of course there is. And I have many friends who, who shoot that way and they're very, very good at it. For me, however, it's about the honesty and, and sometimes it's brutal honesty. So for example, if we look at this picture here, we'll see from a bridal prep time of the wedding day, and you can see that the bride is just getting prepared to have her hair done and makeup done. But in the background, we have the mum and the mum's sister. And you can see from this picture that the mum has been through her own personal battles recently. And I think that this is the kind of picture that even though it's a happy day and a wedding day, you have to be telling these stories, these legacy. And I'll say it again, the legacy idea 
is there to tell the true story of the wedding day. Now, when it comes to pictures themselves and telling a story, it's very important to remember that it is a story and a story has to be a series of images that will actually tell that story. And a story, much like a book, should have a start, a middle and an end. And I find it very easy for me to try and re-emphasize to myself when I'm working, especially at weddings, the way to create that story is to remember the five W's. And that is who, why, what, where and when. If I can remember and keep reminding myself on the day, I need to answer who, why, what, where and when. And if you do that, you'll have a story. Technically, you can tell a story in five pictures, you see. So, for example, in this picture here, it's uh, early in the day. This is way before bridal prep. I've just turned up. And it's a little bit of a humorous story, of course. In this picture, we have the vacuum cleaner. Uh, we have the cake inside box and we have the cake. And I think, you know, you'll all agree that this is the kind of stuff that people don't often see on their wedding day, especially the bride who's busy getting made up at this point. But it's all part of the story. This all comes together to give the who, why, what, where and when. This is telling an, an entire story in its own right, this picture. And I feel like the stories within weddings are everywhere, absolutely everywhere. And it always comes down to humanity and the interactions between people. So, for example, we have another image here of bridal prep. And this is the bride obviously having her dress made up by the bridesmaid. There's a little bit of humour here as well, of course. You can see the bridesmaid is under the, under the dress, getting to the buttons. But the thing that made me take this picture was the light and looking for that light and the composition and the moment bringing it all together. Really important. Another image here from a wedding where the composition isn't so good. And remember what I said at the beginning, a picture doesn't always have to be good, it just needs to be important. That's important for me to remember. And in this picture here, for example, we have a rather fuzzy front ground part of the image, which is obviously the bride's dress, but really the story is beyond that. And the story is the bridesmaid touching the cheek of the grandmother, who you know is obviously a little bit emotional at this wedding. So it's a beautiful picture, but it's not gonna win any awards, but it's not about winning awards when you're trying to create legacy photography. This is all about creating memories and moments for people to look at, to smile at, and remember from a very natural point of view. Okay, so back to some family pictures because most of you probably are not wedding photographers, so I want to encourage you to be able to pick your cameras up and shoot your family wherever and whatever they're doing. So I have a couple more here of, uh, of our children. Um, simple stuff, right? They're just having breakfast. These are the things that you will forget, people will forget in time. I don't have any pictures of myself acting and behaving like this. Not that my parents wouldn't have taken them, but they just didn't, you know, it just didn't exist. These types of things don't exist. So I think it's really important that my children now, even though they're a little bit older than this, they look at these pictures and they smile and they remember and they're happy. And so with that in mind, I want to show you a whole photo film now from a day in the life session. It's what we call a day in the life session, which is actually a day on the beach in southern Spain with a family, a commission that I had whilst I was over in Spain. And it's a beautiful, beautiful film. Uh, four children, essentially, mum. And the light is beautiful, the moments are beautiful, the playfulness between the children is beautiful. And it's a film I really like, and I hope you like it too.
Okay, I uh, hope you like that film. Uh, it's one of my personal favorites, and it's, it's, like I say, it's what we call a day in the life. And of course, that was a beautiful film, and not all pictures are beautiful, as, as I said right at the beginning with, with Albie and the Tears. I'm gonna show you a couple more uh, family pictures before we, before we leave. And uh, this one here, for example, is another one of my favorites from another day in the life photo shoot. And I think this probably sums up most parents' days when they have very young children. So in this case, mum there is trying to feed the, the little baby medicine and uh, the little girl there is taking the opportunity to, to delve into the cake tin. Uh, full face there, she's got the big spoon in her mouth. Uh, and dad in the background, you know, doing the washing up. And I think this is, even though it's a very, very ordinary picture, it's the kind of picture that when you look back in time, you'll think, yeah, do you remember when we were like that? I think that's really, really important. I love taking that kind of picture. And at, when it comes to weddings, for example, we have another picture here, which is bridal prep, as you can see. Now, many people will look at this picture and think, oh my word, look at the kitchen and the tea towels and all of that kind of stuff. But actually, this, for me, is a real telling picture. This is a beautiful documentary picture from bridal prep. We have the bride having her makeup done through the doorway, as you can see. But in the foreground, we have the kitchen, we have the milk on the side, we have the tea towels. We even have a sign up in the, in the uh, corner of the room there saying how many days to the wedding day. It's a bit chaotic, it's a little bit cluttered. But this is what it was really like. This is the real story of the wedding day. Now, in the future, things will change in this house, of course. The, maybe the furniture will change, the, the kitchen will change, all kinds of things will change. And mum and dad will look at these pictures and maybe the bride, will, you know, because this is her family home. And not only will she think, oh, look, this is our wedding day. She'll think, God, do you remember when we used to have that kitchen table or that furniture? Or do you remember when milk bottles were that shape? You know, all these kind of things will be the things that make you think of times in the past in a good way and a happy way. So with that in mind, I shall say goodbye. Thank you very much for joining us at the virtual photography show this year. Very different to what we all expected. Uh, you can find me on Instagram, Kevin Mullins Photography. My website is kevinmullinsphotography.co.uk. I have a, another website called f16.click, which is for more personal Fujifilm type photography. I also have another website called ministryofshadows.co.uk, which is all about my love for black and white photography. And you can also listen to myself and my good friend, Neil, on the Futurecast podcast every Monday morning. Go to futurecast.co.uk. Enjoy.